Top tip, don't wait for 120,000 miles to pass before changing your auxiliary belt. Here's the Deco belt I replaced it with. What we need to do is release the tension on the tensioner, which is the large hex fitting you can see on the screen here. To get better access to fit the belt, I removed some of the uh, plastic under tray and wheel arch liner, just this small piece here and a couple of clips. Of course, you'll need to jack up the car and take off the wheel to get to this. And here you can see the tensioner from the underside and that's the large hex fitting that we need to get onto. Back up top now and I really found that a long zero degree offset ring spanner helped with this, sometimes called aviation spanners. Push the spanner upwards into the engine bay and I used a pick tool to pull the belt off of the topmost component which is the alternator. Word of warning, holding the spanner in that position for a long period of time is kind of murder on your hands, so you might want to use a rag and or a glove. Just bringing you in now to show you how the belt has come off the top pulley, which is the alternator. And here's the Deco belt, including a part number. And I believe that the length of this belt is 1,457 millimetres. Always a good idea to double check this just by holding both belts next to each other. Now I found refitting a bit of a pig to be honest and I wasn't able to show easily in this tight space whilst I was doing it but the easiest thing I found to do was to refit it to the idler pulley which is the central one and it does not have ribs on it and I found that it was easiest just to try to wind it onto that pulley by rotating the engine whilst holding the belt against the pulley. And after a bit of a fight, here it is positioned correctly around that central idler wheel. You can see I have a ratchet on the crankshaft. That's what I was using to turn it to slowly wind it onto that idler. If there was an easier way of doing this, let me know.